Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. It seems to me that every time I start one of these videos about something to do with AI, I kind of start it with, well, another amazing thing has happened. Things are moving so quickly and it, it's true uh, yet again. This time I'm talking about speed improvements. Now, you know about image generators, Dali Image Journey and Stable Diffusion. Well, now Stable Diffusion XL Turbo is out there and it really is a, just a leap in speed and they've done that by inventing a new way a new model a new neural network that generates these images so if you want to find out more please let me explain so this video will be split into two parts in the first part i'm going to show you a demo of stable diffusion xl turbo and how quick it is and then in the second part of the video we'll have a look at the technology behind it Okay, for the first part of the video, I'm going to demo uh, how the new Stable Diffusion XL Turbo works. But we're going to start with Dali just to show you the difference between them. So here we are in Dali. And if I cut and paste here a message prompt, duck playing a guitar in a spacesuit on the moon, we send that in. And now we wait while it creates the image. Now, creating image, there you go. And you've got a little bit of an icon showing you uh, how long it's going to take. So this is going to take several seconds to happen. Now, when we do get over to the new Stable Diffusion XL Turbo, we're going to see that this image generation is almost real time. And then, as I mentioned a moment ago, when we get to the end, we'll talk about some of the tech behind that. So there you go. Dali has come up with two uh, nice cartoon type characters of a duck playing a guitar uh, on the, the moon. Uh, there, there seems to be some extra planets in the background there, but that doesn't matter. That That's pretty good picture, but we had to wait. Okay, let's move over to the Stable Diffusion site. Okay, so here we are trying this out now on the Stable Diffusion site. And basically it can generate images as you start typing. So if we just start with duck, comma, okay, and there you go. There's the picture of the duck. So now we're gonna say, well, let's have it playing a guitar. Okay, so it will generate another image there you go, more cartoony one now of a duck playing uh, a guitar in a space suit. Okay, that's what we asked for in the other one. Oh, there you go, so we've got that now. And then we'll say uh, on the moon. And there you go, so there is our more of a photo-like picture of a duck playing a guitar uh, on the moon. And that came up almost instantaneous, certainly, you know, one second per per image and this will work with whatever you type in uh, as we go along so let's uh, let's pick something else robot playing chess singing a song okay so <laughs> there it is there's our chess playing uh, and singing uh, a robot now, of course this is open to all of the normal problems that you get with uh, these, you know, generative AI, uh, you know, the chess pieces here, you could start to critique all of this. But what I'm talking about here is not the features, but the speed, the fact that it could do it so quickly. It also works if you add in kind of, you know, directions about the type of shot, you know, so a cinematic shot of a polar bear in a maths class the bear is wearing a bow tie and a top hat and there you go so it's it's been doing that literally as we're going along it starts to uh, to to work out those pictures at each different set, you know, and if you change that a top hat quickly to a flat cap There you go only takes a second or two for it to uh, regenerate the the picture again the bear I don't know, Can you have a bear that's smiling is smiling Can a bear smile? Let's see Yay, there you go. So there is our bear smiling. Okay, so the point is here, the speed, not necessarily the features, although as you can see, the features are pretty amazing. Okay, let's go on and look at the actual details of how this works. Okay, so Stable Diffusion XL Turbo is real-time text-to-image generation model. Uh, and as you saw, much, much faster than the existing models. Now, Diffusion models, DMs, 
are the key for generative text to image creation. We saw it there on DALI, Stable, Diffusion also have this, of course, for the earlier models, Mid Journey. And DMs use an iterative process to move from random noise to an image based on the text. And that can be, you know, let's say up to 50 steps. So that's the reason why it takes so long is that it has to do this multiple times and, you know, 50 times, maybe even more. And that's what takes the time to do it. Now, the model starts with a noisy, meaningless image and then it gradually removes the noise step by step. So it acts as a denoiser. And the model doesn't create the image in one go. It makes small changes over many iterations. With each iteration, the image gets clearer and more detailed. Now, DMs don't require adversarial training. And there's a reason why I'm saying that. You'll see in a minute. And they do scale well, which is why, of course, we've got Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, Dali, and they're, you know, and thousands of people are using this all the time. And they're able to scale on a large set of data and scale in terms of the inference in what they can use. Now, there's another type of a generative network, an adversarial network, that can create an image in one shot. Now, the aim of a GAN is to fool a uh, discriminator. It's its adversary. It says, no, that's a rubbish picture. No, that's a, that's a good picture. And it, the GAN is trained up on all these images and it can actually generate the uh, image to fool. It knows it's doing better because there's a discriminator. Now, it's single step and it's faster, but it doesn't scale to large data sets. So that's been a problem, which is why it's not been used for things like DALI and so on. And it's lower quality than uh, a diffusion uh, model. The idea is to create something that has the superior quality of DM, so you get that high quality, but the inherent speed of GAN, so you don't need to go through 50 steps. And that's what uh, Stable Diffusion XL Turbo is. They've actually done that using a thing called adversarial diffusion distillation or an ad and it's the new method used by SDXL Turbo and it turns a pre-trained diffusion model into a high fidelity real-time image generator using one they say and then some up to four steps so what's the technology behind that well it has two parts because now it does have adversarial training Okay, and there's also the distillation loss. So this is a technique where the model is trained to create images that are indistinguishable from real ones. And again, there's a discriminator, a teacher that says, that's a good image, that's not a good image. And in fact, the teacher in this case is actually a DM that we just talked about. And there is a distillation loss, a pre-tained diffusion model, like a highly experienced teacher, similar to the discriminator in Lagan, is used to guide the model. This way the model learns from the best and keeps the ability to create complex and well-composed images. So it's a new way combining GANs and diffusion models. Now we're going to go, this is an excerpt from the paper. Now don't get too uh, overcome here, but I want us to read that text at the bottom and really get to understand that there's, there's two parts to this. So there's the ad student is trained as a denoiser, so it removes noise, just like in a diffusion model, that receives diffused input images and output samples. And it optimizes the, what it's trying to do when it goes through its learning process, it's got a target. It optimizes for two things. A, adversarial loss. So the model aims to fool the discriminator. So the discriminator says that's a good picture, it's not a good picture. So as it learns, it tries to produce a better picture that will fool the discriminator. And also, the distillation loss, the model is trained to match the denoise targets of a frozen DM teacher. So what's happening in this is that the model has got these two parts to it, the adversarial part and also the diffusion part. And then by combining them together, you get this model that can generate uh, these images in one shot, maybe two, three, four uh, iterations, but certainly not 50. Okay, back to the demo. One more as we close off the video. A high quality photo of a sloth at a dinner party wearing a tuxedo eating a barbecue and there he is <laughs> okay so there's our sloth at a dinner party wearing a tuxedo eating a barbecue
Okay, so there you have it. I'd love to hear what you think about this. Is it something you use? Do you think these speed improvements are important or are you looking more for features? My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kinds of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to this channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.